many of you will recognise this one, uh, although this, of course, is the uh, the big hardback, massive, um, don't drop it on your foot version, uh, Subway Art, the 20th anniversary edition. So everybody had Subway Art back in the day in the 80s. It was, Subway Art was the first book that we ever got our hands on, really. Subway Art, Spray Can Art, they were the first books we ever got our hands on. And um, all old writers basically had... Uh, had copies of these books and uh and this was the massive sort of hard copy re-release just basically most of the pictures just done massive it's dandy there um just a huge kind of so that, to give you an idea these are both about a3 size which is what about 30 centimeters by 45 centimeters something like that something like that um what's that in inches about 12 inches by something forgive me i don't work in imperial i barely work in metric basically they're big they're big that's what the whole point is they're great big photos huge photos and there is something about seeing these photos big that that is different just really really takes you there you know fills your field of vision i guess iconic shots like this what a famous shot that was so many you're going to see so many as i flip through here i'll talk about some of them obviously there you go that's uh what's that mill 139 a zephyr dr revolt and um is that min it was min pretty sure that's min You'll re anyway, if you've got sub, uh, Subway Art, you'll recognise all these because they are all the pictures, but they're just, they're so amazing to see them up close. I remember years ago, somebody telling me, um, it was about fine art. They said, um, they said, you've got to go, the reason we go to galleries as artists is because you've got to see the brush stroke. And the same goes for graffiti. You've got to see the line work. You've got to see it up close to really appreciate it. Lovely case two piece that. The computer rock. All that. Duster and Lizzie, famously. That Futura. I think that's Futura. That is certainly Futura. Futura top to uh, top to bottom whole car. Amazing, right? Beautiful. This used to be one of my favourite pictures ever. So you've got Dondi with his pals. It's just, and, and the style was, this guy's style particularly was the thing that used to stand out to me, obviously, for obvious reasons. Look, he's got like the Puma States on and, he, and, uh, and the Stay Pressed. Great body warmer and a Kangol. It's, that, that look there was what we all tried to copy in the 1980s some of us succeeding better than others i have to say my look wasn't that great busting in the yard desi des dj k slay rest in peace he left us recently again iconic pictures that we will never forget dondi doing his uh, children of the grave the finished article there it is Thanks to everybody who filled me in on the story, by the way, because I've been asking for ages. How did he do it in broad daylight? I never knew. And so a couple of people have told me recently how it was done. So I appreciate that. Thanks, chaps. Um, this guy, Case 2. I was fascinated by this guy. Fascinated. By, I mean, fascinated by him, but also what he did, his art. He just had one of them creative minds that was just, you know, just on a different level to everybody else. Scene, obviously. Uh... Yeah, he invented some, some mad. He's just on a different dimension, you know. He just, he could think in different dimensions. He was so clever. I don't think he ever really got. I mean, he got recognition from graph writers, obviously, but you know, I don't know uh, outside the scene if he got any, ever really got the props he deserved. He's dead now as well. Rest in peace, mate. Big top to bottoms here. Bust. That was Dondi. I don't know who Eric was. Somebody tell me. Duro, another member of CIA. Lot, 
lots of great iconic pieces there too many to mention you can see them i'll just point out the future ones just there world war three of course in those days people forget actually it's weird in them days because we all sort of expected that there was going to be a nuclear war at some point we all really expected that and now we're sort of back to expecting it um but yeah that was, that was a it was a real thing in uh in the in the in the eighties about about nuclear warfare. Trap Des Days. It's a really iconic train there. And they were like oh, I just love something about big window down hole cars. Because the top bit is always sort of like, you know, it's been buffed to hell and it's all grotty and horrible, but you can still see where the train's going, where it's you know its number and all that and the windows and all that. And then you just got this amazing big window down burn all the way through just ooh, love it absolutely love it there's another one there lovely little floating cloud there bit of bode on the end stop the bomb another one another one very you know it's just zeitgeisty very zeitgeisty russia usa this is what we thought you know how can we destroy and kill ourselves while our killers stand alive and waiting man is almost extinct when was that? 81. Yeah. Iconic one of the old bill. Where are these fellas now, I wonder? Still alive, maybe? What's this? This is like, it's almost 40, over 40 years ago, isn't it? 42 years ago. Those gents would be old men by now. Great. So great. Oh, I love that. What an amazing elevated track shot. Duster and Lizzie, Duster and Lizzie. Lovely scene piece and a bit of old sort of wanted poster style font. Ooh. Kel Crash. Mm. Massive blockbuster pieces. Imagine painting that in a yard. I've never painted like that in a yard, you know. Massive, great, just sort of whole car. Never done that. So I, I, you know, I can only imagine how much paint and patience and God, I run out of patience at the best of times on a wall. Great Bode characters. Mm, Seen Hand of Doom on the fold out there. Oh, tell you, I'm not going to fold it out. I'm not going to do it. Um, there's the, uh, the very famous blade top to bottom hole car. Bit of Dondi on the uh, Children of the Grave Part 2. Another fabulous, fabulous car. Brilliant. Oh, this is the famous Style Wars car. Who did this? Knock, I think it was. Um, the character from uh, Wizards. Or well, certainly a sort of a, a, a caricature of the character from Wizards. If you've ever seen the film Wizards, if you haven't, it's an interesting one to, to look at. This guy, um, Ralph Bakshi, was very, very influenced by Vaughn Bode. And uh, you can see a huge crossover in their work. I don't know how Bode ever felt about that. Uh, you're kind of thinking that the stuff is very, very close to what he did. But anyway, you know, Bakshi was uh, you know, also a sort of recognised um, artist in his own right and all that. Anybody knows anything about Ralph Bakshi, drop it in the comments because I'd love to hear what if, if there's any story around that or anything like that about him and Bode working together. Anyway, this is the Star Wars car. Fabulous car, so great. Again, iconic. Nice, nice, nice. A big quick piece there. There was a man who knew how to get his name up quick. Lady Pink, nice little stash. Blade and Lee. Blade cutting a very 70s style there. Look at them strides. Wow, amazing. Mean Des Skin, great. Again, iconic train. Because look at that, it looks clean up there. 
Looks completely clean. Looks like they managed to hit a clean one. And that character, so famous now. Nice. I mean, look at this. Is what I'm talking about. Look up close. Look at those lines. You can see them. You can see what it was like to to, to have to chuck these lines. You can see how fast people worked in a yard. I mean, that is the thing, if you've ever painted illegally, you know, you work fast. You can get, you get pieces up quick. You know, they may not be perfect, but they're up. You know, you've got to work really, really fast. Bit of Campbell's suit action there. Funnily done that. Oh, that's a nice tea kid. Nice bit of tea kid there. Too much to mention, really, isn't there? Blade Dolores. I mean, I just, there's so much. Oh, yeah, I really like that scene piece with the Pink Panther character. And, yeah, great. Midge. He's an interesting one. Well, look at these fellas here. This guy, that's a... That style there, that was the style. That was absolutely it. The old body warmer and the uh, red, is that a bucket hat he's got on there? Can't even tell. Nice dark blue jeans and shell toes or whatever he's wearing. Great. Just look at that character. Look at that character. That's amazing. I've never noticed that before. That's the beauty of looking at stuff on this size, I guess. That is a really great character. That's fantastic. I'm noticing it for the first time, literally. Cool. Spot something new. TDS. The Death Squad. What a great picture that is. He's reading his newspaper. <laughs> yeah. mm, check out the backdrop. I mean, I love the piece, obviously. I <laughs> love all this. Scroll on the end. Remember the days we used to put scrolls on our pieces, all that? Oh, so much fun. But look at this in the background. Look at the fire escape. One of these buildings again look at life for composition what a great bit of composition negative space there beautiful bit of skyline you've got three very distinct types of building there so buildings don't all look the same some which i'm guilty of often often kind of go oh, can't be bothered to think about a new type of building buildings do not look the same also just sorry just to go back to that which is that's on a different so you've got that that's right next to us Push that one back further. You can see the perspective coming off that building. Push it, and that one there pushes that back further. Then that sits right at the back. Lady Pink and Scheme in some yard somewhere. What is it? Probably the three yard, isn't it? I'm not an expert on New York graffiti. I always say this. It's always a caveat. Uh, if you are an expert, then please, you know, chip in the comments. Let me know. I'm assuming this would have been the three yard. Always love this. I mean, look at these. That is a fabulous tag, isn't it? I've always loved, I mean, you know, I know it's a matter of taste really, but I've always preferred big fat marker tags to, uh, to tag and spray paint, always. I just love a great big fat marker, like an 850. Well, those old-fashioned um, heading torch markers you used to get. I just love them. I love the sharp corners, the sharp edges, do you know what I mean? When they're, when they're completely full of ink. I wasn't crazy about when they used to run out of ink. It's, I know it's a look, and it's a, it's a very sort of, it's an aesthetic all of its own. You know, when they start to run out and you get very kind of scratchy, kind of liney, liney lines, if that makes sense. Um... But yeah, I always preferred when they were really, really thick, black, sharp edged, sharp cornered. Scene and duster. 
we go on quick pace again. That's a mad fill. I'm just looking at that. That's a crazy fill. Really good. Mm, yeah. Oh, this is uh, an iconic shot of a lot of famous faces. I won't name them all. I probably can't name them all at this point. Let's have a look. There's Shy. That's Crash. Duro. Um, Lady Pink. Oh, who's that? Was that Trap? I can't remember. I have known all these guys at some point. Uh, this is on the set of uh, Wild Style, the, the movie. I remember looking at this piece and really liking this because, I'll tell you why I like this, because he's put a white outline on, but he's left his 3D just pink with no outline. And there was something about that that I really loved. Just an aesthetic that I really liked. I really liked it. I'd never seen it done before. I'd always seen, you know, an outline taken around the 3D as well. And that one just really appealed to me. I love them colours as well, these years. <laughs> this is that famous Rasta piece. Hope I don't have to be a jerk and go to work. And this bit, I remember being enthralled by this bit, this broken sort of sphere thing with the, the gases coming out the top. That inspired a lot of uh, a lot of work after that. Some famous big top to bottom hole cars here, all by Lee, obviously. Yeah, nice. Bit of scene action there. Yeah seen in his younger days. Tell you what, he's got some nice pumas on there as well. It reminds me a lot as well, those of you from the UK. Um, UK used to be really grotty back then in the 1980s, 70s, 80s. It was really grotty and dirty and uh, sort of missed those times really. There's bomb sites everywhere and whole places that we sort of, you know, wasteland that which you, you just used to play on all the time. Old derelict buildings and, you know, derelict railway stations and old train lines and stuff. Active train lines as well, obviously, but um, it was all a massive playground and uh, mostly that doesn't really exist anymore. Because everything's very nice and shiny now. I mean, it's nice that it's nice and shiny, but, you know, it's not as... I don't know. I think if you if you've grown up a certain way, then you kind of you like it that way, don't you? I like it a bit dirty and grotty. We are the sons of the ghetto, and we will survive. Box one hundred. I think I, if you watch that Pops one hundred video, I've done a couple of weeks ago. You see it all in Chrome. He's done a done a homage to this this scheme piece, and uh, he probably did that in. I don't know, 92, which would have been about 10 years after this was painted. But the sentiment stays the same, you know. I guess it still stays the same today, you know. The sons of the ghetto, we will survive. It stays the same. <laughs> so cool, Henry and Martha. Henry Shelford and Martha Cooper, obviously, who uh, without them, we wouldn't have any of this. Thank God that they chose to document the world of graph the way they did. And a great picture at the end of Scheme on somebody else. Who's that fella? Anyone know who that fella is? I can't see who that is. Anyway. There you go, guys. Subway Art. The massive edition. The 50 kilo edition. Not really, it's not really 50 kilos. It's the, the big hardback 25th anniversary edition published by Thames and Hudson by Martha Cooper and Henry Chalfant. Subway art. If you can't get the big one, get the small one. If you haven't already got it, most of you most of you have, have got these books anyway, but I know you do. But if you don't, they are well, well worth it. And for the younger gen coming through, get a hold of them, learn the history, 
you know, because frankly, without you guys learning it, you know, it'll, it'll die, um, you know, because we're all getting a bit long in the tooth now. So anyway, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that.